everyone on YouTube. I am James. I'm Katie. We are the 802 Garden Gurus. Welcome back for a new exciting episode. We have a brand new garden space this year and we've been working very hard transforming it and we want to take you on a tour. So come with us. So what is uh, what are we planning to do to make this a back to Eden garden and make it? Yeah, we are. What are we gonna do? We're gonna put cardboard down, right? Then we're gonna put mulch, wood chips over it, and straw to suppress all the weeds and allow the uh, sunflowers to grow up uninhibited. And the same with the corn over here. We've made. Um, mounds just like Native American style and there's corns, beans, and squash the three sisters method growing up in the mounds over here so we laid down cardboard and uh, wood chips and then straw just to act as a weed block and there is the sunflowers and the three sisters and then we have our potato garden over here with uh, all blue potatoes and a couple red potatoes in the end. But the, uh, we tilled the whole thing up first and then put the seeds in the ground. And as they came up, we began mulching around them with uh, old composted mulch and dirt from our last year's garden, which I'll show a picture of um, so you can see what it looks like this year and how much our space has really expanded. It can go about halfway up, right? Yeah. Then we use screws to hold the log so that the um, log stays up and vents the greenhouse. We're also going to put screen on there underneath that agribond so we can leave it open all the time and keep out a lot of pests because that's really what this has been for is lots of pests out here in Fletcher, Vermont and um, really fertile. Because we're in the middle of a field. Yeah, pasture, soil. Um, that it just there's lots of life out here and the domestic vegetables and plants can have a real hard time competing with the adapted plants of nature out in our fields but what's inside Katie? Cucumbers. Just cucumbers? And melons. And some melons. So we've reworked all the soil raked it out, got all the wild grasses out of here for now. And we also have some um, PR51 delicious melons here. They're getting a little, they're getting attacked a bit by flea beetles, I guess. Slugs. Slugs, mostly. So this is the greenhouse. It's gonna hold our cucumbers and our melons. 
We have a small greenhouse over here that we bought a couple years ago. It's all portable. Um, easy to move, easy to set up. Stays really hot. We got to put a new zipper on the right side and uh, make the thing seal up nicely so the wind doesn't blow it away. Katie, what do we put on the ground? Because the grass just grows up so quickly. How do we get all this stuff that's on the um, ground? We put cardboard and burlap sacks that we got from a local coffee maker. Um, and he just gave them to us for free and um, it works really well to keep gra the grass down. Wow, look at that. The worms are already decomposing the burlap sacks, which are completely biodegradable. Wow, that is amazing. So that burlap sacks, before. cardboard, and straw, everybody, for domesticating virgin land. Wood chips. Wood chips. Too, which we don't have yet. So we're going to be laying wood chips and cardboard and burlap sacks pretty much all over this garden area that we'll show you the rest of here in our tour. And that'll suppress all the native grass, and then we'll just weed whack around the borders wherever we have to. So let's tour the rest of the garden now. Over here is where we planted our blueberry bushes that we just got this year from a local certified organic farm called The Farm Between in Jeffersonville, Vermont. And the way that we planted them, this was all grass before, so we dug holes. We put in compost into the holes and back one of them as a... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> and then we put down two thick layers of cardboard and put this wood chip mulch material on top of it. And that's how you plant berry bushes, especially um, blueberries because they like a more acidic environment, which is what the wood chip provides. The soft wood wood chips, right? Because these wood chips are from our last year's garden, which you have seen in our Back to Eden video. If you haven't, go check it out. But um, So these wood chips have been composting for a year, and the soil that's mixed in with them is definitely um, has an altered pH that's much lower. So we've been mulching with our last year's wood chips from our previous garden, which we'll show you here in a moment. What's next, Katie? Um, this strawberry bed, which we have covered right now because of birds and the strawberries are starting to, you want to me? Yep. are starting to ripen, um, but it's pretty straightforward. We put rocks all around this bed and then we, sorry folks, and then we mulch with straw and hay around the strawberries. Wow, it's warm in there. <laughs> Sorry, the camera keeps rotating down. That's why you should just hold it there. Yeah. I'll edit that out. Anyways, we've been working real hard covering up previous existing beds and tilling new beds and then covering them with uh, landscape fabric and black plastic mulch. And so this was one of the earliest vegetable beds we planted this year. How old is this bed, Katie? Uh, I don't know, like a month and a half, maybe. Or... Probably like a month and a half. Month and a half to two months. We got some broccoli coming up nicely. Got some beans, carrots. Sugar snap peas coming up nicely. Katie says they're flowering, so hopefully we'll have some heads on our broccoli soon. It's been a good year for it, nice and cool. We've got some radishes here, some lettuce, it's coming up slowly, some onions, oat, celery. So everything's coming up really nicely and doing well. And uh, it's been easy to maintain this area because of all this. Um, burlap sacks, cardboard, and straw. All these mulches are really helping us keep up. So let's go check out some more brassicas. So over here we have 
cauliflower, broccoli, which some are doing real well. And these were just planted less than a week or two ago, two weeks ago. Some have died. And this is all new. Tilled all this whole area right here and just cleaned it all out with weeds and, and the, the sod. So then it got baked in the sun and it got rained on real hard. And then I raked it a few times. And so I put compost in with every, every plant I could find. Made a nice little hole for them. But some of the extremes we're seeing here in Vermont are taking a toll on some of the young, newly planted brassicas. So we got cabbage, uh, Romanesco, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli, and Romanesco, all in these beds here. And then we have the beautiful herb garden over here that Katie's been working super hard on, and she's doing really well. Yep, this is our herb and perennial garden. Um, so we just have an assortment of many different herbs. Speak For louder. Culinary, oh. You're, no, it's fine. It sounds good, but just speak louder. So we have an assortment of herbs in here that for culinary and medicinal use, and we have some perennials. It's beautiful. Let's take a stroll around. I see lupins. Um, I don't know my perennials that well. Tell me more. What do we got here? This is bee balm. Oh. When it blooms, it will be beautiful, beautiful red flowers. So then we got borage down here. Dill. Yep. Dill, cilantro. So and parsley over here. Then we got the sage, obviously. Sage. Violets. Oregano. Oh, oregano. Oops, excuse me. And apple. Over here is like the mints, apple mint, peppermint, chocolate mint, and spearmint. Oh, wow. I did not know that. You didn't know spearmint was okay? No. Wow, that's awesome. So then we got some calendula here, milkweed there, volunteers. What's here, Katie? Um, these are catnip. This is Tulsi, which is getting eaten, so it's really not doing very well. But and this is catnip, which is also still really small. Right here is chamomile. Then we got some more calendula, some native grass, you see how well it grows. <laughs> oh, we have a potato here, which Katie needs to put some more well, mulch on. It's a volunteer potato. Volunteer potato. Then what's here, yarrow? There's some yarrow and California poppy. Ooh, where's that? Right here. Oh, that's California poppy? Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. <coughs> Oh, and then what's that? This is an artichoke. Nice. Growing an artichoke, folks. And there's Your something. shadow is moved. Your shadow's in the way. There's the artichoke. We got some garlic here. And we got some more garlic down there. And some native grasses. Some dandelions, of course. The tour, folks. Here's the Brussels sprouts. Katie's going to lead the way. No, Okay, she's not. <laughs> So, we got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 26 Brussels sprouts, and then we got 2, 4, 6 cabbages. These were all pre-existing beds that the previous tenants had put in, and then we covered them with landscaping fabric and then mulched the whole area with straw that was used for insulation around the foundation of our house during the winter time. So that has really helped keep down all the tall grasses. And we've been weed whacking everywhere else, but 
it's a constant job keeping up with the native grasses. So, what's down here, Katie? Tomatoes. How are they doing? They seem to be better now that we've gotten some heat. So we planted our tomatoes way too early inside. They got real lanky and then they got real weak and then we draw them outside and the extremes were so excessive that they really were looking poor for weeks on end. And now they've really, they started to come back too. And it really helped to get them off the ground because you can see how lanky they were. And so we put them on these stakes and we've been mulching around them of course and we've had plenty of rain so everything's super moist still and they're actually looking really well here. And then we have under the cover of the Agrabond, we have more cabbage, broccoli, um, there's uh, pak choy under here. Katie, can we see the pak choy? Can we see the pak choy? We're gonna look at the pak choy. It's hard to grow. This, we're doing all we can to protect it from native pests, and it was just planted like a day ago. So, as you can see, it's looking a little, a little, a little beat, beat up here. So, we're doing the best we can. And obviously, it's a cool weather plant, so now that it's so warm, and even because we have the agrabon over it, it's gonna, it's gonna take it a little bit to adjust. So many weather extremes this year in Vermont. So we got some on, uh, onions here, and then there's a bed of kale, dino kale and Bates kale in here, which we'll just leave for now. And then we got this prepped bed that's gonna get filled in with some stuff this weekend. And then we got these really weak looking peppers, which we need to get some Epsom salt for all that magnesium and uh, put them in the soil to get these plants to grow up a lot faster. Katie, have we picked off? So we've been picking off all the flowers because we want the plant to grow. And I put some perlite under the base to help reflect light from drying out the soil as a mulch kind of, and uh, to get that vegetation stimulated some more. And then we got some more areas waiting to be utilized, but are, we're gonna be covering with cardboard, burlap sacks, and wood chips over the next few months. So over here we have summer squash and zucchini, which was planted a week or so ago. See how we're using the cardboard. The cardboard gets weighted down by the mulch and the straw, and then it just deteriorates, but it also suppresses all the native grasses. So this is our summer squash and zucchini bed. And then next door to the summer squash and zucchini is the sweet potato bed. And it's right there, of course. These sweet potatoes are looking real weak. They've been shocked for a couple weeks because of the weather extremes here. They're finally starting to look real green, but they got very dark. And they're actually trying to, they're growing now. The weather has become more like their environment around Vermont and I'm trying to do the best I can to reflect light with the straw and perlite onto the vegetation instead of sucking the moisture out of the ground by absorbing the sun rays lights with the dark soil, which obviously we all know as Back to Eden gardeners is not what you want to do. So then over here we have Katie's milky oat experiment. We're growing some oats and when the seeds get to their milky stage we're gonna she's gonna harvest the seed the milky oat for medicinal purposes herbal purposes and then next door to that we're experimenting with growing some ancient grains 
from Heritage Grain Conservancy at growseed.org. This is black winter emer, which will um, hopefully yield us some more seed for next year because we only got a tiny pack of seeds that seemed to germinate with our five pound um, grain bag of uh, einkorn. So this is a wheat experiment. And this is a good view from a central point of our garden. You can see the area has really expanded this year. And we're doing all I can, all we can to have fun, but also work hard and make this garden area productive for us so that in the next couple of years, two to five years while we're at this property, this every year, it'll be so much easier to cultivate and grow our food and we'll do less work. So that's the whole point of busting all this out as quick as we have. This has all been done in two months, two or three months. So there's a nice little swale. We have drainage. We had to dig it all out and the neighbors are doing a great job cultivating their section. And it's really starting to come along and look like a garden. So please stay tuned for more videos from 802 Garden Guru. We'll have some more exciting episodes as things grow up and start fruiting. Yeah! Say something, Katie. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Subscribe and like 802 Garden Guru.